Hello everyone, it's Jane Mamalmi. Thanks for joining me for a brand new Killa Kit series. This is going to be using this beautiful Wonderland collection, which is from the last Close to My Heart catalog, but there are still plenty available. So I wanted to showcase this because I have tons of snow pictures, as I'm sure a lot of you in this part of the world do as well. So these are the photos I am going to scrapbook and isn't it perfect that my daughter is wearing this light pink? And even though there's a lot of other colors like this bright green and my son, this collection is just really gonna work well and play off of this pink and some of the softer colors, the white of the snow, of course. And I just think that this is gonna be really fun. As you can see, I have lots of photos here. So I'm gonna show you how to incorporate a lot of photos into your layouts. And I did keep one of my four by sixes as two or three by four because I wanted to show you how I print them. So I recently got a PictureMate 400 at home printer. I love it. I am obsessed with it. It prints such good quality and that's how I printed these. And what I do is I go into the PicFrame app. I create a uh, four by six, which would be two to three ratio. Um, collage and then I add my two photos so once the 4x6 is cut in half it creates two 3x4 photos. I use PicFrame because it exports a high resolution image which is very important and then I'll just use my little photo trimmer here and I'll line up those lines in the middle. Sometimes it's not exactly perfect um, so I have a little bit of extra here, so it might be a tiny bit less than three inches wide in your finished photo, but it's really not a big deal. And then I've got my three by four photos. This has become my favorite size to scrapbook because it's still big enough to see a lot of detail and capture the memory and, um, but then you can fit more on your page. And there's also three by four flip flaps, which I'll um, likely be using with this. So I am using this Wonderland collection and I wanted to give you a quick look at it before we dive into it. Um, since we will be killing this kit, it, this is the scrapbook kit. So you can get just the paper pack with sticker sheet, but it doesn't come with all the cardstock you'll see. These are two exclusive papers to the kit. And then there's also a bunch of die cuts that you'll see as well. And those all come in the scrapbooking kit. I'll be sure to link everything down below if you're interested. So here is that super fun sticker sheet. And then the kit also comes with these dots. Now these dots are actually only in the kit. You can't even get them separate. And I just love using dots. So I had to get the kit. Um, and then off to the side here, I've got the guide that comes with the scrapbook kit. So the guide tells you how to make these three two page layouts. So if you wanted to follow it exactly, you could, but I will mostly going, be going in my own direction, maybe using some of them as inspiration, but I'll be doing my own thing. And so you can get double, triple the inspiration from this kit. Um, from this Kill a Kit series. But if you are interested, it tells you exactly how to cut your papers and then how to put the layouts together. And um, it just, it walks you through um, step by step. And you get all of these little die cuts in the kit to create the layouts. So even though I'm not creating these layouts, I'm gonna be using those die cuts on my layout still. It also comes with a photo placeholder, so if you're not gonna be adding your photos right away, you can still adhere something. I often use these as photo masks, so you'll probably see me doing that. I love these really intricate die cuts. Look at how beautiful those are. So um, you've got those to work with, and then these pretty little banners. And then there's other, um, die cuts too that come on the 12 by 12 sheets so you can just pop these out they pop out really easy so they'll just pop out and they're on nice heavy stock it's not quite as thick as cardstock but it's heavier than just a paper a patterned paper so 
you can pop all of those out and I'll probably pop everything out ahead of time and just work from it as I work on this kit. But if you do follow the instructions, they are labeled so you know that this is for project three. This whole page is for project three. And then there's also more snowflakes on this page that are for project three. And then you've got this dividing line to show you up here is project two. So these would be for the layout two if you are going to follow the guide. This is a large die cut that will you would actually pop these out. And so one of the layouts shows photos popping through, showing through the back of this. And so that's really fun. Here are a few more of the die cuts. You can see this one's already kind of falling out. Um, and then let's look at these beautiful papers. I've already got them all turned over. So the back side is the same as what's next to it. So there's these two fun papers, these ones, the snow. And today I'm gonna to be using these snow papers. And then there are these two patterns and that's what is on the back of that one. And then because we got the kit, we've also got some exclusive paper. So these two papers are used in the layouts and these are available in the kit only. And then you also get the cardstock colors that you'll need for the kit. So it's not a full cardstock pack. You can get the coordinating cardstock packs separately that go with each kit. So this is not quite a full pack. You've only got one of a few of these, whereas the full cardstock pack comes with two of every color. So this gives you what you need to complete the designed layouts. So that is a look at the paper and what comes in the kit. I also wanted to show you that I pulled in a few things from my stash that I thought would work really nicely. We've got this Wonderland accessory. These are little felt shapes that are stickers. And so those might be fun to use on my layouts. I also got the Picture My Life card, which are just pocket cards. And sometimes these are fun to incorporate into layouts, even if you're not doing pocket scrapbooking, like this winter one would certainly be fun. And it's the same kind of design on each side, but one is vertical with a little bit of a different look, same colors, but different look. And then one of them is horizontal. And so that is how all of these are. And some of them are good for titles. Some of them are good to just kind of stick behind your images or use as layering pieces. Um, I also like, oh, and there's journaling. Um, but I also like using these for cards. These are great for cards. Um, so lots that you can do with these pocket cards. So um, I may or may not use them on this layout. We will see. But the most exciting thing I am gonna do on this layout is foil. So I recently got the Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil System and was playing with it. And this foil plate that I got looks like snow. I thought it was just so cute, so perfect for snow. So I created this one piece by um, just going up the 12 inch strip, just doing it twice. So I'm gonna show you how you can do this too, if you have the hot foil system, or if maybe you've been intrigued with it like I was for a long time and you don't know how to use it. So that's gonna be really fun to incorporate in my layout and I kind of envision this kind of slope of snow um, with white and this pretty foiled um, polka dot paper. So we'll see how that turns out. And last but not least, I've got these snowflake stamps. These snowflakes each have a die. So I'm gonna play with these and maybe add those mix in with the die cuts that came with the kit to give it kind of a varied look. So we will see about that. So let's go ahead and clean this up and dive in. So I started out by popping out all of the die cuts from the kit as well as cutting some of my own die cuts with the dies. I even used this wisteria cardstock that some of the die cuts came on to cut out some of the smaller snowflakes. I used the front and the back of the paper. And then with those three snowflake dies, I cut out some silver foil snowflakes because I knew I would want to bring that in to match the foiling in my hills as well as some vellum and white glitter paper. 
and then I cut out the die cuts that match the stamps and I wanted to show you how I made sure that all of the stamps lined up just right and got a good impression. So I have the mini Misty and I die cut first. Typically I would stamp first and then die cut because, but I had so many, I just wanted to do all the die cutting first and then do the stamping. So I kept all the negative space and lined that up in the corner of my Misty. And then I was able to pop in the die cut, glue it down with just a little bit of glue, and then I could stamp it multiple times if I needed to. I ended up stamping them each about two or three times. And then I had a bunch of stamped die cuts. I ended up not using any of these in this video, but I wanted to have a whole bunch of snowflakes right on hand for the rest of this series so I can just pull from a bunch of snowflakes if I wanted to. I used several pieces of, or several um, colors of cardstock, including the front and the back, and these ones I did on the Glacier Blue with dark gray or a medium gray, I think it was pewter ink. So I've got my backgrounds down on my Versa mats to help me line everything up and I'm figuring out where I want my photos. I put the three by four underneath another three by four cause I knew I wanted to use a flip flap there and I decided to do that on this side as well. And that not only gives me, um, frees up some space for embellishing and adding some design to this page, but it also gives me more space for journaling. I I'll put a journaling card under one of the flip flaps and then a fun little pocket card under one. Now I decided that I wanted these photos backed in white, so I used those photo placeholders that I showed earlier, but I wanted the three by fours to be true three by four size, so I actually cut down the four by six placeholders and for the four by six photos, I cut down the five by seven placeholders so that they would be four and a quarter by six and a quarter. Now I'm creating my hills here that I talked about wanting, and I thought the easiest way to do that would be to line up the photos where I want them and then just trace the hill on to this white daisy paper. And I used this one sheet of 12 by 12 paper for all of the hills and had a little bit left over as well. So I sketched it out so that I wouldn't be kind of guessing as I cut and I, so that I would be able to visualize where those hills would be. And then here I'm also able to line up that hill with the other side of the page. So I'm getting my background hills cut out first and then I'll bring in that foiling that I already did. And I'm gonna show you how to do that on the other side. But I did the same thing with all of these. I sketched it out first and then I cut it and it put it on the page. Now here, I wish that I would have cut that bottom layer a little bit shorter. It's covering up a little bit too much of that beautiful foiling, but live and learn. It's glued down in the end and not coming up. <laughs> so learn from my mistake. Now here is my Spellbinders Glimmer Hot Foil System. This is brand new to me. This is the first day I was playing with it actually, and I played with it a lot before creating this video, but I watched a lot of videos first and then um, just played on my own. Now, I know that this is daunting, and for me, I watched videos and I kind of got the hang of it, but honestly, the best thing I did was just dive in and start doing it myself because through trial and error is where I really learned. So I got the gist of how to use it and then I figured out what worked for me and actually what they recommend is a little bit different from how I do it. I like starting with my paper on the bottom, then putting my foil down, then my plate, and then sandwiching it together that way they tell you to start with the plate down because the plate is what has to be down on that platform that heats up. But I found I like doing it the opposite way because I can visualize the paper and then I know I need the foil side, the pretty side up and then the plate so that I don't accidentally put the foil the wrong way. But you'll figure out what you like. Now this one here is what goes directly on top of the heat source and then that plastic clear one goes on top of that. So I had to wait for that green light to turn on and then I had, had to hit the timer button. 
watch some videos on how to do this in detail because this is not a full tutorial. I'm just showing you how I used it on a scrapbook page. But then I ran it through my die cut machine slowly so it gave it time to really press in. And then look at this reveal. It kind of just fell out here, but I'm going to do it again. But look at how pretty that silver foil is. So now the second time, this plate is hot. So I'm using my tweezers to line it up across the page and it cooled down a little bit so I could touch it. But here I'm using that heat resistant tape to kind of create a hinge here. It's actually the Cricut tape that's used for um, heat transfer stuff. And I'm using it here and it works perfectly because I wanted to create a hinge so I could get that foil right up to the edge and keep the plate in place so that it stays lined up. Then I'm gonna hit, put it onto my heated surface. I hit the timer button, waited for it to stop flashing, and then I'm gonna send it through my die cut machine. Now I have the Spellbinders Platinum 6 die cut machine. It's what I already had. This is what is designed to go with the Glimmer Hot Foil system but it doesn't have to. So if you don't have this machine, you just wanna make sure that your opening in your die cut machine is at least six and a quarter inches wide to fit this surface. Now you might want to kind of try it out first if you can, maybe a friend has one or ask some people online what die cut machine they have that works with this system, but this is what I use and um, so I cannot speak for other systems. I also want to show you those foils. Those are some other colors that I have that um, I will use in future videos. But now that I have this beautiful foiling done, I'm going to do the same thing, trace it onto my layout exactly where I want it, and then create the rest of my hills. Now I'm going to pull my title from the sticker sheet. I'm actually going to use my um, anti-static pouch to take the stick off of this sticker because I want to be able to move it around on my page and um, I actually end up putting it up on some foam tape. I'm going to lay that down while I figure out the rest of my embellishments and such. So I pulled out these three by four cards from that picture my life pack I showed earlier and I really liked that winter one and it matched the colors in the snow fun title. And then I had these two card options that had spots for journaling. So I'm deciding which one I want. There was that one that had a sled on it and I was toying with that, but I ended up going with the one with the beanies and the journaling lines. Now I'm gonna start adding a bunch of my die cuts. These little swirl things are from the kit. So I mentioned that I cut out all of punched out all of the snowflakes, I actually ended up punching out all of the die cuts from the whole kit. And I've got a lot of them laid out right up in front of me and then some other ones set aside. Mostly the swirls and the snowflakes are out in front of me because I know I'm gonna be using those a lot. I have a lot of snow pictures coming up. But I'm also gonna try to stretch this kit to work for um, some other kinds of pictures too to show you its versatility because I know it's always fun to use a kit for something that it's not intended for to um, show that it can be versatile. So just pulling in a bunch of these snowflakes. I fussed with snowflakes forever so I didn't keep all of the footage in. I kept the important stuff in um, and I'm going to talk through my thought process but I liked some of the snowflakes kind of layered up and then some of them were sort of like separated. I kept the rule of three and visual triangles in mind, but I didn't always use three. So here I'm trying to use three snowflakes, but in the end it just, I ended up not liking it. I only ended up using two and then I'm gonna pull in another one of those flourishes for over there as well. Now I'm trying to balance out all of my clusters and make sure I've got visual triangles. Now a visual triangle doesn't mean that you have to have only three clusters on your page. You just want to have like triangle here, triangle there. Basically it's it's not a hard and fast rule but you, you want your clusters to guide your eyes across the page. And so as I'm creating these clusters, I'm, I'm standing as I'm doing this because that gives me a really good vantage point 
as to what I need where, but I realized I need just a little bit more over here and I have that blank space. Um, another one that I added a snowflake off camera to um, that bottom four by six photo on the right. And then over here where I'm at now, I'm gonna play with those snowflakes quite a bit and I cut some of that footage out, but um, added that swirl and then ended up just keeping those two snowflakes. And you'll see I added that sledding sticker down below that. And that sort of acts as a third element, um, but it also brings in some purple to the page. So the woman in that sledding sticker is wearing purple. And then I've got purple in my snow fun title. And now here I'm going to add another little sticker from the sticker sheet to create a visual triangle across the page and make it look balanced. So I was thinking that these little mounds of snow, these little hills were kind of blending into each other. So I used a really, really light ink. This is linen ink from close to my heart. You can use any very light ink just to make them pop a little bit. I want it to be very subtle. And then once I got all my snowflakes and such in place, I realized, you know, I didn't add any pink. I was excited about adding pink to match my daughter's jacket and I didn't use any of the pink papers or embellishments. So I'm adding some pink enamel dots here and there around the page to again, draw your eye across and then added a few stickers too. There's a word sticker and a few little pink heart stickers. And I feel like this is very balanced and the clusters draw your eye across the page and my photos are the focus even though we have so much fun stuff happening so here are some close-ups and then i'm going to show you how to um, add the um, flip flaps to the layout it's very easy and i've shown this in several videos before i've got my layouts in the 12 by 12 page protectors i've got the one flip flap already adhered on the right so you can see it and now i'm going to add this other three by four flip flap so I've got my photo on the, that I want on the top and then upside down on the back, I've got my journaling because this is going to flip up. So that has to be upside down. I just stuck them in and then this little adhesive flap is going to flap over the back and then you're going to simply adhere it on to your page protector. And that is it, couldn't be any easier. So if you get things in wrong, if you get it in upside down, you can still easily pull things out after you're done. And here are some uh, still photos so you can see some of that detail and appreciate some of that foil and glitter that is hard to see in the process. I wanna thank you guys for watching this part one of the Killikit series for this paper collection. And I'm excited to bring you future videos every Tuesday. And I will still also be posting on Thursdays. Here are a couple other videos you might enjoy. I hope you'll hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching and have a great day.